Hello friends, in my previous videos on oscillators, I have discussed about several LC oscillators and RC phase shift oscillator also, like a RC a phase shift oscillator, Winsbridge bridge oscillator, or example of RC oscillator. In case of LC oscillator, I have discussed the Hartley oscillator, cold pit oscillator, and all. Okay, so now in this video, I am going to discuss what is the drawback of LC oscillator. This is going to be a very important topic, and this may come as MCQ question in your quiz. Okay, so. Uh, just let us have a discussion on this. So what is the drawback of LC oscillator? See, the frequency of oscillation, if you observe for Colpit oscillator or Hartley oscillator, which are basically nothing but NC oscillator, you can see F is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over of LC. This is the basic formula, right? So now from this formula, it is quite clear that if we want to achieve very low frequency, like suppose 1 hertz or like that, then the L and C, these two values, uh, that is the value of the capacitor and the inductor should be very high, right? From the equation itself, it is clear that is F proportional to 1 by root over L, F proportional to 1 by root over C. So, if we want to achieve very low frequency, the inductor and the capacitor used in the feedback network should be very high, okay? Very high in value. Now, let us have a quick look on the basic capacitance formula. So you know capacitance of the two parallel plates is given by C is equal to epsilon A by D. I am considering the parallel plate capacitor for uh, easy for the discussion mm, I, because I want to make the discussion easy. So you can consider other capacitance also no problem. All this concept is applicable for the other shape capacitance also like cylindrical capacitance and all those. Okay. So see Basically, from the basic formula itself, it is clear that capacitance proportional to area, right? Obviously, capacitance proportional to the epsilon, that is uh, the uh, permittivity, uh, uh, more specifically, we can say the relative permittivity between the two plates of the capacitor. And if the relative permittivity increases, the capacitance will increase. If we uh, reduce the distance between the two parallel plates, then also capacitance will increase. But see, here another factor is there that is area okay and this affects huge in the capacitance value if we increase the area of the uh, parallel plates of the capacitor then obviously capacitance is going to be increased right and obviously it is clear that if the area of the plates increases what will happen the holding the charge holding capacity of the plates will increase and what is capacitor capacitor is nothing but uh, it gives the idea how much uh, charge one plate can hold, right? So basically as the area increases, the capacitance will increase, right? So basically from this formula itself, it is clear that to get very high value of the capacitance, we have to increase the area of the plates, okay, in a huge amount, okay? That means uh, for high value of the capacitor, the area of the plate should be very high. And as the area increases, obviously, the size of the capacitor will increase, right? So basically, so that I have drawn here a huge capacitor, huge parallel plate capacitor with uh, permittivity epsilon, which is nothing but epsilon naught into epsilon r, okay? Where epsilon naught is basically the absolute permittivity and epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the medium and d is the distance between the two parallel plates. So obviously, from this discussion, it is clear that to achieve high capacitance we have to use means the the capacitor will become huge in circuit uh, huge in size right because area becomes high uh, the parallel plate area will increase as the capacitance increases so size of the capacitance will increase right up to this it is clear okay now let us go to the inductor so let us take the basic inductor case that is uh, inductance uh, uh, formed by a solenoid that is L equal to mu naught into mu r into L square into A by L where L is the length of the solenoid basically and A is nothing but the area of the coil okay area of each turn of the coil right now here also suppose you want very high value of inductance then see the major factor is area again so basically Obviously, if you reduce L, L, the inductance value will increase. That is fine. And other factors are also there. That is fine. But see, 
if you want high value of the inductance then obviously you have to make the area of the uh, coil very high okay so very high inductance mean area should area a should be very high that means see here i have so that i have drawn one huge size inductor okay so basically from this discussion it is quite clear that if we want very high capacitance and very high inductance then the size of the uh, components that is the, the size of the inductor and the capacitor will become very high because to get very high value of inductance and capacitance the area should be very high right so basically here comes the disadvantage just now from initially i discussed that to to apply uh, apply is not a pro proper term in this case you can use achieve okay so to achieve very low frequency from the oscillator what is the need for in case of lc oscillator the inductance and the capacitance value should be very high and just now i discussed that if the inductance and the capacitance value becomes uh, very high then obviously uh, it will uh, in turn um, the circuit also the will the circuit will become bulky right because the components will become huge in the size okay so basically to achieve low frequency the circuit becomes bulky and obviously this will become unattractive right because bulky circuit is obviously unattractive right uh, you uh, you don't want to carry a huge uh, desktop computer so that you carry lap laptop right because it is uh, portable and it is attractive because it is not bulky okay so basically as uh, for lc network if we want to achieve low frequency then the circuit becomes very very bulky uh, so this is basically nothing but one huge disadvantage okay so here comes the disadvantage of the lc oscillation lc uh, circuit based oscillator that is we cannot achieve very low frequency that is uh, suppose 1 hertz or like that with a decent and uh, proper uh, smaller size circuit okay we cannot achieve lower frequency and if we want to achieve the circuit will become very bulky and here comes the advantage of rc uh, oscillator over lc oscillator see what you know that r see here i have just opened the wiki page you know already basically this is the basic formula of the resistance so see ohm's law and you know this r is equal to nothing but rho l by a so basically resistance is inversely proportional with the area right see here the structure itself this is the area of cross section so obviously resistance proportional to 1 by area that means if we want huge resistance obviously the area should be as small as possible right and here comes the advantage see what do you know uh, the formula of frequency of oscillation for rc oscillator if you consider the rc phase shift oscillator then the frequency of oscillation is given by what the frequency of oscillation is given by f is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc root over of 6 right for rc phase shift oscillator if you consider wins bridge oscillator then f is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc right so very small uh, frequency can be achieved in case of RC phase shift oscillator if we increase the resistance very much. And we can, if we increase the resistance, then the one way is decrease the area. So it will not make the circuit bulky, right? Because smaller area means the circuit will not become bulky, it will become, it will take smaller space, right? So basically, uh, with the application of the RC phase shift oscillator, we can easily get. Uh, with, with a smaller circuit itself we can get very low frequency okay so this is the advantage of rc phase shift oscillator over lc oscillator okay and this is very important discussion you may get mcq related questions from this topic so this is all for my this video thank you for watching